Our reading this morning is a poem by David Hoyt, The Opening of Eyes. That day I saw beneath dark clouds the passing light over the water, and I heard the voice of the world speak out. I knew then, as I had before, life is no passing memory of what has been, nor the remaining pages of a great book waiting to be read. It is the opening of eyes long closed, seen for the silence they hold. It is the heart, after years of secret conversing, speaking out loud in the clear air. It is the vision of far off things. It is Moses in the desert, fallen to his knees before the lit bush. It is the man throwing away his shoes as if to enter heaven finding himself astonished, opened at last, falling in love with solid ground. There's something that has been really important for us to revisit in the sermon from some time in today's day. So let's go back and revisit the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Place where we're dealing with important issues. Let's remember back to that day. Philadelphia Eagles having won zero. Super Bowls are playing the New England Patriots here, one five Super Bowl. New England has Tom Brady playing quarterback, who's the best to ever played game. Our star quarterback, Carson Wentz, is out injured. Our backup, Nick Foles, is in there trying real hard. And at the end of the first half, draws down miraculously. The Eagles are leading 15 to 12, and they have the ball in their arm. The move trying to score again. Well, they get stopped, and it's fourth and goal. With very little time left, coach has to make a big decision, and he does. He says he's not going to go for the safe three-point field goal. He's going to risk odds wise a lot more to go for the seven point touchdown. He might, he might come with enough. Back there, get back, right there. Mm -hmm. So, Cal, huh, Cal? On the sideline, on the sidelines, we learned now from all this technology. Nikki Six is over there, he says to the coach, do you, he's ramped up on adrenaline. Do you want Philly Philly? And the coach says, yeah, we can do that. Quarterback goes back to the huddle, tells him, Team Philly special. Huh. Okay. Then we see something very rare, especially in big moments in football. The quarterback is lined up back here, calling the play. You know, call five sixty-two, and he moves. He moves down here. Running back comes in. Corey Clement gets the snap, goes this way, hands off to Trey Burton, the big tight end, coming this way, who comes around and throws a touchdown <coughs> to our wide open quarterback in the end zone. We go up 22 to 12 at halftime, never to trail again, and win our first Super Bowl, knocking out the heavyweight champions of the world. <laughs> so that, that's not even my favorite play. My favorite play. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brandon Graham strip sack at Tom Brady. Yes. Perhaps we'll engage that. Vision is the spiritual theme of the month. And talking about vision, Bill Hybels, a minister from Chicago, says visions happen when people articulate a picture of the future that produces passion in people. Talk about a picture that elicits passion in people. And so that play in the Super Bowl was. <laughs>
heart-centered celebrations in this city and region in the future. We can keep hold that picture of what happened for other big things, including being together, fighting poverty, all kinds of stuff. I, that's what I, I know that. Please look at the cover of your uh, program right now. It's a picture from Philadelphia Magazine. <coughs> and on the left you see Sue Saparito on the right is Tini Dillion. Both are cancer survivors. And this photo is part of a project of Mamas Move Mountains, which empowers women in our region to tap into their passion and vision for battling cancer by literally taking pictures of one another. The group helps women envision themselves as bold and beautiful, absolutely including when they are bald. Going back exactly one year, Ms. Gilliam, who had just lost all of her hair, she's in the picture, she had just lost all of her hair from chemotherapy, she recalls that she was not yet comfortable going to the grocery store without a wig, let alone taking a photo shoot on a crowded street. And on the day of preparing for this photo, she says, when I first looked into the mirror being made up in style, I started to cry. Because I realized I had just had this static image of what I looked like being bald, but I had never seen the photos. And this helped me see that I actually looked pretty and strong. It's a big change. These stories of bold, visionary cancer survivors conjure David White's poem. That day I saw beneath dark clouds the passing light over the waters, and I heard the voice of the world speak out. I knew then, as I had before, life is no passing memory of what has been nor the remaining pages of a great book waiting to be read. No, life is the opening of eyes long closed, seen for the silence they hold. It's the heart after years of secret conversing, speaking out loud in the clean air. Historic examples of opening eyes long closed and hearts speaking out loud in the clean air deserve our attention. <coughs> Jane Lead was a universalist living in the late 1600s in England. In 1697, Miss Lead articulated a vision for the church. She called it a renewed garden of paradise in which humanity's beautiful diversity would flourish. That she was opening eyes to a vision of paradise in this world as opposed to, this is a big paradigm shift, as opposed to the fire and brimstone afterlife ideas which were commonly preached in the polls of the day. Lead, Miss Lead, helped open people's lives, eyes to begin seeing female religious leadership. And oh my gosh, have we been blessed by that? For example, today Unitarian Universalism is the only major religion in America with over 50% clergy. It's been that way for a number of years now. And around here, just around here, you can go around the country and hear their story. Around here, Mallory Lovett, Nina Gray, Stephanie Nichols, Mara Dowdle, Rebecca Froom, Joan Javier Duvall, and Constance Simon, just to name a few, have opened eyes and empowered hearts to speak out in the clean air. Vision has always been essential to this congregation important part of the history of the beautiful but small building located on Sheldon Green. They were growing out of the property 
and realized that it was impeding their needs to do their programs. So folks had a vision, and in the 20s they bought about six acres of land right here on Lincoln Drive, hired an architect named Gilchrist, and designed the buildings of their dreams. Today, in building an elevator, in building an elevator, we are living out our vision of a church campus with more dignity and more accessibility for all people to all the things we do. And I thank you so much to everyone for your hard work and generosity in making that vision come true. It's a big deal. At a personal level, having a vision for oneself is important. It can be pivotal. It can lead to greater things. And it is not always easy. The Lord knows that I have experienced periods, I have experienced periods of dense fog and mute heart. How about you? If yes, the good news is that we're not the first people who struggle with feeling disoriented in life, and we come here to help each other open our eyes to new ways of living. So you might say, great ideas, interesting thoughts, but how do you do it? That's one thing people ask a lot of times when we're wrestling with these things, you know, how? I'm talking about me and my life today. A couple thoughts. First, think about, hold close to you the idea of how much energy, or you could call it power, energy you have available to you from the universe and from within you to do this, to have a vision for a new way. If Jane Lee were here, she would tell you that God's all-embracing love is with you all the time, available for this. My language might be more like there is an energy and a power of life and spirit that can empower you to create and love beyond belief, beyond what you might think is rationally possible. It's there for you. Love is the greatest power, most powerful force in the universe. Dylan Thomas said, you have available to you the force that through the green fuse drives the flower. So if you just want to stay, if that's biological, but just that thing that grow, grows that flower can grow you. And still we have roadblocks. You could have a bunch of energy but have a bottleneck. And let's just name it. Many of us have absorbed ideas that shut us down. Whatever level of consciousness they are with you, many of us have ideas that we've absorbed over the years. You might have been told, you know, creativity is for flakes. That's flaky. Here we go, we need a job to pick those. You might have this voice saying, you're not good enough or talented enough to do anything creative. Or it's too late, you're too old. You really are stuck in your ways. This is the way it is, pal. This is you to you, right? And all those messages are untrue. It's the play way say. They are untrue. So one thing you can do is replace the negative with positive. Mantras help. They really do. They can, they can be beautiful. Pick a mantra that works for you. It might be, I open myself to receiving life's gifts and giving blessings to others. I open myself to receiving life's gifts and giving blessings to others. Just, or you might say, my creativity heals myself and others. My creativity heals myself and others. Whatever your words for you, pick one that resonates in language that speaks to you. Now, it, but it's also true, sometimes we've got to be a little more disciplined in getting out the negative. You can't just replace it because it's pretty ingrained sometimes in how 
would grow up. So one simple, simple tool is just writing. Just write out your thoughts. The, the, this fear, anger, worry stuff gets so entrenched. But just write it. You, you can have a little journal. Just write it. No one has to look at it ever. But just get it out. And have to really, it really, it might sound um, new agey. Nothing, you know. No offense intended to anyone, but this stuff works. Studies show. The other thing is reduce your contact with negativity, including negative people. Now, this may sound lacking in compassion, but remember, you can still love a person and have boundaries with a person who whines all the time or complains all the time or always sees things the last half empty. Just get a little bit of distance there. You know, you can, you can engage a person, hey, can we switch this conversation? Can we turn this? Because I feel like we're talking negative a lot. Can we just say, can we talk more positively? Or just build a boundary and spend less time because we absorb energy from each other. So, so think about that. If you're trying to move your life in a new direction, and I think it's worth it. This is vision. This is vision and it matters for our lives, whatever your theology. Um, another thing is just getting rid of junk. So many of us have too much stuff in our life, and it's, it's a little feng shui, but I really, really believe in this. If you reduce, reuse, and recycle, give it to friends, throw it away, give it to Salvation Army, it can not, open, not only open up physical space, but psychic space. It's true. So I had an unexpected opportunity this summer when we had a nasty water leak in my closet in the office, and a bunch of boxes got soaked and moldy. Fortunately, a lot of it was stuff I should have gotten rid of a long time ago. We pitched it, and guess what? I honestly feel like I have more opportunity to do new things. So, so seriously, think about those relationships between the physical and the emotional. Now, this is the fun part. I know Alice is excited about this because I see her in this one. When you get rid of that negative stuff, Emotions, relationships, interactions. Fill it with delight. Fill your life with delight and beauty. Life is short. There's so much beauty that we don't often get a chance to stop and engage with. But intentionally, maybe make a list of 20 things you'd love to do. You know, your fantasy list or whatever you want to call it. It could be eating more raspberries or going skydiving. You know, so, and then pick one or two of them and do them. Just do things that are, feel amazing to you. Fill yourself with amazement. This is a religious principle. Go, go on an artist date, Julia Cameron calls it. This is just with you. Nothing personal against anybody else, but you need to be with you to go to an arboretum and sit, or go to a museum, or walk in the park, or, um, you know, go go and have John Coltrane on your headset and eat a great ice cream cone at Bread and Bags. Just just go be with you and engage beauty and wonder. You're filling yourself up, and by doing this, I really believe by doing this, you create space for creative goodness in yourself. It will bubble. You will have excitement and new ideas. And then you just kind of have to stick with them, whether you write them down or paint them or sculpt them. You, you, you take it and find a way to mark it. Write it, paint it. I believe you have plenty of visions. A vision might bubble of you as a more joyful, truly happy person. Paint that picture <coughs> of you. A vision like bubble is you as a more relaxed person who intentionally makes fewer plans. Paint the picture. A vision like bubble of you is an ever more kind and compassionate social justice warrior. <coughs> Paint the picture. Mark it. To hold it. You might have a vision bubble of you settling into a community. Maybe you're a person who moves around a lot, whether it's in the region or the country or the world. But the picture might be, you know what, I'm going to make some roots in this ever-transient world. 
and find a place where I'm known and know and feel supported, that could be your picture. Maybe that sounded boring and dull when you were young, but that could be the picture now. I have a vision that I realized through this team that has really been bubbling up in me for some time. I, my vision for Kent is falling ever more deeply in love with Philadelphia. Falling, I, and by the way, sir, I love Philly. Like, I'm Philly Philly. <laughs> but I said, you know what? Um, why don't I dive in more and get to know neighborhoods and languages more? Go, you know, embrace the theater, go to theater a little more, learn the history more. Of course, I go, but there's a million things about the history here I don't know or remember. You know, just the parts and the people. So, I, I'm, I'm excited. There, like, my list is so long to live out this vision. To fall a little more, a lot more in love with Philly. What about you? Whatever picture the Spirit gives you, don't hide it. Paint and sculpt it, write it on a cocktail napkin. Don't apologize if it's strong and bold. What are people going to think of me about this vision? Don't, work, don't think about that. Frequently, people with the best lived lives are not those with the most talent or ability. They are often the people with the most audacity to go for it. True. Paint your spirit of life given vision for yourself or your family or our church or our world and do it with audacity. Call upon the powers that be around you and within you and together let's make it happen. Blessings be. Amen.